Spice and Wolf, Volume 12 by Asuna Hasakura. In the snowy plains of Winfield following the events surrounding Brondel Abbey, Lawrence, a traveling merchant, and Holo, a wise wolf disguised as a young woman, are on their way back to the mainland with their companion Call, a young scholar, when they receive a letter from Piaski, a member of the powerful Ruvik Alliance. The letter details the Abbey's attempt to sell a fake holy relic, a wolf bone, to the Jean Company, a trading company secretly funded by the Debo Company. Huskins, a sheep spirit and friend of Hollow's, had warned Lawrence of the Debao Company's plans to exploit the Northlands and its resources, gathering holy relics to gain the Church's support. Realizing the implications of this information, Lawrence and his companions decide to return to Kirubi, a bustling port town, to seek information about the Northlands and the Wolfbone. Huskins had recommended an art seller named Hafner Hugh, a sheep spirit, as a potential source of information. Upon arriving in Karub, they visit Hugh at his shop, which is filled with large, vivid paintings depicting landscapes and religious figures. Hugh, initially terrified of Holo's wolf nature, eventually reveals that he collects and sells these paintings to preserve the memories of the disappearing landscapes that his kind, the sheep spirits, were forced to abandon. He expresses his reluctance to get involved in the conflict in the north, fearing the consequences like those faced by his comrades who oppose the church's encroachment. However, he agrees to introduce them to Fran Vonnelly, a talented and enigmatic silversmith known for her knowledge of the Northlands. Keeman, a shrewd merchant and acquaintance of Lawrence's, warns him about Fran's notoriety due to her association with individuals with questionable pasts. Intrigued and cautious, Lawrence and his companions visit Fran, a young woman with striking dark skin and black eyes, at Hughes's shop. Fran agrees to draw them a map of the Northlands in exchange for their assistance in investigating a legend about an angel in the village of Tausig, located near a mountain range in the north. The group travels to Tausig, a seemingly ordinary village nestled in the foothills, where they encounter the villagers apprehension towards outsiders due to rumors of a witch residing in the nearby forest. Vino, a friendly villager, shares the legend of the angel, which describes a sighting of an angel ascending to the heavens from a waterfall near a lake. He also recounts the tale of a nun, believed to be a witch, who arrived in the village with a pack of dogs and claimed the forest as her own. Following Vino's guidance, Lawrence and Holo arrive at the lakeside cottage where the nun, Katerina Lucci once lived. They discover her desiccated corpse, along with her diary, which reveals her devout nature and the challenges she faced due to her unwavering faith. Fran arrives with Call and reveals that she possessed Katerina's diary, which detailed the villagers' and landlords' manipulation of the witch rumors to avoid building a water mill and paying taxes. Fran also discloses that Katerina's canonization as a saint is under consideration which would make the cottage and her belongings valuable holy relics. Fran proposes a plan to save the forest and lake from destruction by the landlord, who intends to build a water mill, convince the landlord that Katerina is a saint and that her canonization is imminent. Initially hesitant due to the deception involved, Lawrence eventually agrees, recognizing Fran's desperation and the potential consequences for the village. The group confronts the landlord's governor and his troops, claiming that Katerina is a saint and that they are there on behalf of the church to confirm details for her canonization. However, a mercenary among the soldiers recognizes Fran as a former chaplain of a mercenary troop with a notorious past. He exposes her identity, jeopardizing their plan. In a moment of desperation, Fran delivers a passionate speech to the villagers and soldiers, questioning their morality and reminding them of the angel's presence. A fight breaks out and Fran is injured. Despite her wounds, she is determined to witness the angel herself. Lawrence, realizing the connection between the legend and Holo's earlier observations about the lake's formation, asks Holo to howl from atop the waterfall. Her powerful howl echoes through the valley, causing an avalanche that creates a spectacular display of ice and water resembling angel wings. The villagers and soldiers are awestruck, and many abandon their weapons in fear or remorse. Fran, witnessing the angel with a sense of peace and fulfillment, thanks Lawrence for his help. 
they return to Karubi, where Fran recovers from her injuries and eventually agrees to draw the map of the Northlands as promised. The story continues with Lawrence and Holo reflecting on the events in Tausig and Fran's true motivations. Holo, initially annoyed by Fran's demeanor and manipulation, comes to understand her as a woman deeply affected by her past and driven by a desire to find meaning and closure after the loss of her comrades. Fran's pursuit of the angel legend was not merely a quest for inspiration as a silversmith, but a way to honor the memory of her fallen friend and find solace in the belief that he had witnessed the angel before his death. Lawrence, on the other hand, grapples with his own motivations and the realization that his desire to help Fran stems not only from a sense of obligation, but also from a personal desire to create a better, more hopeful world for Holo. He recognizes the inherent selfishness in his actions, but also the importance of finding meaning and purpose in their journey together. As Fran recovers from her injuries, she opens up to Lawrence about her past as a chaplain for the Kiryavainen mercenary troop. She describes the hardships and losses she endured, the constant threat of violence and betrayal, and the feeling of powerlessness as she witnessed the deaths of her comrades. Fran's experiences shaped her into a strong and independent woman, but also left her with a deep longing for peace and a world where faith and beauty could prevail over greed and conflict. Lawrence and Holo, moved by Fran's story and her unwavering determination, reaffirm their commitment to helping her find her way back to a place of hope and purpose. They recognize that their journey together is not just about reaching Yoitsu, but also about supporting each other through the challenges and uncertainties of life. The story concludes with a sense of closure and new beginnings. Fran, having found peace in witnessing the angel and accepting the loss of her friend, is ready to move forward with her life. She fulfills her promise by drawing a detailed map of the Northlands, which will guide Lawrence and Holo closer to Yoitsu. As they prepare to depart from Karube, Lawrence and Holo reflect on the lessons they have learned and the bonds they have forged. They understand that the world is not always a kind or just place, but that there is still beauty and hope to be found in the connections they make and the choices they make. The journey ahead may be uncertain, but they face it together with a renewed sense of purpose and a shared belief in the power of love, faith, and the enduring spirit of the wolf. If you enjoyed this summary, please consider subscribing to the channel.